Hi everybody and welcome to chapter 10 of your grammar book. So today we are doing some distance learning and so I'm going to run us through a couple sections of chapter 10 of your grammar book. Now I know you don't have your grammar book with you today but you'll be picking that up at school this week hopefully. And until then, I have sent you a notes page where you can fill out notes as you go through this with me, and also a, a little practice worksheet for today. So let's get started on subject verb agreement. First of all, let's answer what is a subject and what is a verb. So our subject, remember, tells us who or what is our sentence about. And the verb tells us what is being said about our subject. Our verbs are both action or linking verbs, two types of verbs. As we go through here, we're going to see both action and linking verbs. And when we talk about subject verb agreement, what we're talking about is looking at our subject and deciding if it is singular or plural. Remember singular just means one, plural means two or more, so more than one. And then once we find out or decide if our subject is singular or plural, we need to have our verb agree with that. Our verb needs to be singular or plural going along with our subject. So how do we do this? Well, there's a couple ways that we can look at this and there's a couple little rules um, that we use when we're going through grammar to help us understand which one to choose. So hopefully as you guys um, are now in your teens, you've been talking for a long time, a lot of this comes naturally for us. We hear other people talking, we, um, as we're going through sentences and deciding which way uh, we need to correct this or if it's a singular or plural and how it should sound, a lot of times we just uh, know it almost on instinct as we've learned um, through the years just listening to conversations, reading books, um, and understanding our language a little bit. But let's go through what some of these are. And I'm sorry if I'm moving around a lot. I've got our books here in front of me so that I can stay on track because you know how I can be. Okay, so we have subject verb agreement. We have a couple of sentences here that are going to hit a lot of the rules that we are going to talk about in this chapter. Our first one says modern families use the internet in many ways. All right, let's talk about this. First of all, our subject is families, right? Who or what is the sentence about? Families. We can see right here by this S that this is a plural subject. So therefore, we're going to use a plural verb. But that means it's not going to have an S. So instead of saying modern families uses the internet in many ways, we say use. Use is our plural form of a verb. So it can be somewhat confusing if you look at the S and you're expecting another S and that sort of thing because we know that one of our spelling rules is that when you add an S or ES, you make a subject plural or a noun plural. With a verb, it's the opposite. All right, so that's our first one. If we can see that our families is plural, then we're going to use a plural verb, but in this case, it's going to be use, okay? Our second kind of rule that we come across is when we have something called a collective noun. We went over this a few weeks ago, maybe even a few months ago, where we talked about how we have collective nouns. Family, congregation, team, group, a gaggle of geese. Although it's just one gaggle, it's made up of several geese. Although it's one baseball team, the team is made up of what, 12 players? Okay, so when we see the word, a word like world, a collective noun or team or group, although it's made up of a plural amount, it's just one world, it's just one team, it's just one group, and so it's considered singular. So here we go, the online world, just one world, presents many risks. Notice there's that S. So, world is singular, our verb is going to be singular, but in this case, a singular verb usually has an S. Okay, until we get into things like linking verbs. Okay, so linking verbs tell a state of being, right? Um, so, is, are, was, were, those things. Um, and so, they are called irregular verbs in that their tenses, past tense, present tense, future tense, 
are not just adding ed, ing, that sort of thing, but it changes the entire verb. We also notice here that we have children. Now, children is plural, although there is not an S. So remember, we went over this as well a few weeks ago, how if I have one child, I, that's singular, child. But if I have another child, I don't have two childs. I have an irregular subject. I change it to children. Children is plural. In this case, my verb needs to be plural. I can say, my child is, but if I have more than one child, they are, okay? So children are not the only ones at risk, okay? And then finally, just when you think you got it all down and everything is wonderful, there's always exceptions to the rule. Some of our exceptions are I and you, when we're using the subjects I and you. Now, if I say, I walked down the street, or I am a teacher, it's just me, right? I can only be singular, but we're always going to use a plural verb, okay? So I wouldn't say I is, right? Um, I am going to say I am, you are, and so when we see I, although it's singular, we're gonna use plural, and when we see you, you can mean one person, you can mean a whole gaggle of people, but we're always going to use plural for that as well. So I could say, Dora, you need to keep your personal information private. But I can also say, Caleb and Dora, you need to keep your information private. So whether it is singular or plural, you're still going to use the plural for you, okay? I hope that you guys get this a little bit and understand it a little bit. If not, definitely I'm, I have my office hours. I would love for you to give me some feedback and let me know what you think about this. Okay, so if we are going to talk about verbs and we're going to talk about, am I even in the camera anymore? Sorry. And we're going to talk about subject verb agreement. We need to talk about something else and that is prepositional phrases, okay? So I'm going to erase this because one of the things that we learned in our parts of speech section of our grammar book is that we have prepositional phrases. Now, a pre prepositional phrase is going to um, show us a location or in give us more information about our subject, okay? So if I had something like this, one of the restaurants have or has a new chef. Let's look at this <clears throat> because if I look at my verb and I say, okay, here's my verb, my subject must be right in front of it, restaurants. And restaurants is plural, so I need to use the plural form of the verb. <clears throat> in this case, this is not right because one of the restaurants have or has a new chef. Of the restaurants, is a prepositional phrase. It's talking about one. One is our subject. So we need to make sure that when we're looking at these sentences, we're classifying them correctly, that we find the correct subject. Because if we use restaurants, we're gonna do this wrong. Because one is our subject and one is singular, whereas restaurants is plural. So we can take out this prepositional phrase, one has a new chef. Okay, or we, it, because if we look at this and said restaurants have a new chef, <clears throat> excuse me. So we know that we need to make sure that we look at the subject and we take out the prepositional phrase so that we're not confused by that. Another one would be my friends on the soccer team are hungry after practice. Well, soccer team, it's just one soccer team. So that is singular, but our 
verb, or our subject rather, is actually my friends. My friends on the soccer team are hungry after practice, okay? So it's my friends, which is plural, are hungry, not my soccer team is hungry, okay? So I hope that that makes sense to you with the prepositional phrases. So I'm going to take this off here, and we're gonna move on to one more thing before we get into, um, uh, or before we close for the day, I guess is what I should say. All right, so we have what is called a compound subject, okay? You should remember our conjunctions. There's actually several conjunctions, but the ones that we look at the most as far as uh, making things compound or combining things are and, but, and, or, okay? So these conjunctions um, are the ones who help us with compound subjects and verbs. So in this case, we're gonna look at some compound subjects, okay? This is when two or more subjects share the same verb. So I'm gonna use you guys an, as an example, and I hope this is true. Dora and Caleb, okay? Okay, Dora and Caleb enjoy or enjoys being home. Okay, if we were to look at this like we did when we were learning about prepositional phrases and we say, let's just look at Caleb. Well, Caleb enjoys being home. If we just look at Dora, Dora enjoys being home. But this and, I'll use a different color here, this and is combining our subject. So while we have two singular subjects, our conjunction is combining them, so we end up with co a compound subject, or two, or a plural subject. So now, this is plural. Dora and Caleb enjoy being home. Enjoy is our plural verb to go with our plural subject, okay? So when we're looking at that, as we're looking at our no notes, and we're talking about um, our compound subjects and finding subjects, we need to make sure that when we see and, but, and or, that that is, a, a flag goes off or an alarm goes off in our heads to say, oh, okay, this is combining something. And so Dora and Caleb enjoy being home instead of just Caleb enjoys and Dora enjoys. Okay, so this was our first introduction to distance learning. Um, we're going to continue doing things like this um, coming up, but I'm also working on a couple other things so that you and I can stay in touch and chat back and forth and see each other. Um, but until then, ah, uh, start working on your notes page as much as you can get done from today's lesson, and then see if you can complete the 10.1 worksheet for today. All right, thanks guys. Have a great day.